like a job. Oh, the guy last year that was really good for us was Dorian O'Daniel, and he was a kid who's kind of been on the shelf for a year or so, and then all of a sudden, but he did an excellent job for us last year uh, in special teams, and I think he was our special teams player of the year. Uh, but, I mean, he's a solid Eddie guy, and then usually what happens is these guys develop uh, under kind of the underground swell, and then all of a sudden they start playing uh, linebacker position, which Dorian's kind of worked his way into the – to the defense this season, so uh, it'll be interesting. He's going to play some special teams too. How excited are you to get a guy like Feaster back there? Oh the yeah, defense? you know, you look at Feaster, and you know, some guys. That's the other thing, you know, is 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 trying to make sure that you possess the ball. I think that's got to be our number one issue, simply because, you know, if you're sitting there in our shoes, you're saying, hey, let's get the ball back to us offensively, you know, uh, and so possess the ball is critical, and so, you know, it'll be interesting to see how he catches. You know, I think that's a huge thing. Uh, and that's why sometimes punt return, you, you, you give up a little bit with a dynamic guy sometimes simply to say, hey, let's possess the ball. And so uh, Artavia Scott, Hunter Renfro uh, are, are kids that I know that, that, that can field the ball re you know, really well, and, and they'll get good opportunities this season for us in that realm. Uh, using uh, Wayne Gallman some on kickoff return, you know, would be a be an advantage to us now that we have even more depth at running back. You know, things like that that we sit around and talk about and work at. So, those are things that, that we all work at in fall camp to see who are our guys, who gives us the best opportunity, and, and then and then kind of plug them in and work at it. Speaking of Hunter, can he will he be the backup punter, or or do you, know, you want that's, Aspires that's to come one in? Thing. He was <laughs> our you know the, the darn kid. He he he. Can, I mean, he he's athletic. He can catch it, and he punts a pretty decent little ball for not working on it as much as he does. But but uh, he was our backup punter. Hopefully this year, you know, we can find we can find another guy. Carson King is a kid that's out, and we have uh, Will Spires, and then uh, M Michael Batson's out. Are the three guys that hopefully can develop and give us some depth as, as a punter, and obviously Andy staying healthy and can continue in his 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 punting. Easiest way to solve the kickoff coverage, obviously, is to find the kicker that can put it in the end Correct. zone every time. You know that, but you know, some, uh, sometimes you know we, we we've had a couple kickoff tryouts in the spring, and then uh, I'm interested to see Skowski. He he's a <laughs> kicker. I'm interested. You know, he's a linebacker, soccer kid. I'm interested to see if he's a viable candidate. And then, then obviously, you know, Greg and uh, Alex Spence are, are guys that'll be in those roles right now as we go into camp. I think people don't understand the, the job that Greg did last year. Oh, they have no idea. Well, you know, take Greg, for instance. He, he has a, does a great job at hey, kicking field goals last year. I mean, he's a comes out of nowhere to be a, a really solid guy when we cross the 50. But probably the worst thing he did was kick extra points. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like me out here trying to make a three-foot putt sometimes. I mean, you know, you snake one in from ten, but you, you can't make the three-foot putt. So all those things you go back and look at and, and really emphasize with all those kids. But, you know, Greg's done a good job for us and anticipate him doing another one this, this fall. I wanted to ask you about D.J. Greenlee. That's a kid that gets overlooked a lot. But I've heard, you know, Coach Sweeney mention him a lot, Coach Elliott or Coach Scott. You've mentioned him now. He, you know, he's been – I would say, you know, DJ's been sort of inconsistent up until the last two weeks of spring. And, uh, and, and I use the word inconsistent, I mean, because he'll, he'll, he'll shine at some points and in some points that you'd think, you know, that it's a fairly easy situation for him to handle and he didn't. So as a coach, you try to go back and say, you know, what, what really generates this guy to being out there? And so uh, – but he has had a solid, you know, in the spring and, and summer. So I'm anxious to see what he's capable of this fall. Do you have nightmares about that Alabama onside kick? <laughs> you know, yeah and no. <laughs> you know, I mean, part of that you get in that game and, the, you know, the kids played their hearts out and you wish, you know, there's something different you could have done or prepared them for. You know, you, you think about it in those rounds. But as far as nightmare, you know, that's behind us as far as that goes. and. Look forward to this season and, and the challenge of putting it together again and making another run, uh, run through uh, uh, attack our conference. Can can I get a breakdown? I know sometimes people think Danny Pierman is just in charge of all special teams, but you've got you know Venables maybe on kickoff. How does yeah. that all? I mean, who's got what responsibility? You know, I'm, I just really am in charge of uh, the meetings per se at times and organization of it, and then but we have direct coaches which coach assigns each year uh, to particular teams and. Uh, you know, uh, Marion Hobby and Britt Venables handled our kickoff, and Mike Reed handled our punt return. 
I handled kickoff return, and uh, it used to be me and Tony Elliott, but now Tony's involved in the offense more, so I handled that, and then and then I handle punt per se, and then uh, coach I kind of oversee most of them, and then Dan Brooks handles our field goal block, and Robbie Caldwell handles our field goal. It's kind of been the breakdown the last couple of years. Davo mentioned in the spring, you know, he he went somewhere, you know, looked at what people were doing special teams wise. You think he would take more of a, of a of a role in special teams? You know, he he uh, he has a big role in it now. You know, as far as you know, guys, he sees the guys that are on there, and you know, he he's also involved in the meetings. He's also involved in practice. He sees the drills we do. He he you know he has a big influence on what we try to get done there. And uh, but uh, he he'll he'll he'd be glad to take a role in it. You know, <laughs> and uh, and he did. We did last year. We we emphasized you know quite a bit of them. If there's one thing that Clemson can do to improve the coverage teams, what do you think that would be? You know, I think just be sound, you know, make tackles. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, stay in a confined position so that you, you can work with your neighbor beside you and squeeze the ball better, take better angles to the ball. And, then, and really, it's, it's, it's working as a cohesive unit just like you would on offense or defense. Uh, you know, you don't spend quite as much time on it as you as you do an offensive play per se. Um, for instance, you don't want to spend an hour a day just using kickoff coverage. But you know, we just got to find the right guys that want to be on it, and uh, a lot of it's want to from that standpoint. And and then you got to have some guys that are willing to go down there and get get them on the ground.